talk about a new book coming out for fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. It's coming out in, in early to mid-November, and it is called Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. I'm going to put the cover up on here now. Very cool little cover of, of the Witch Queen, Tasha. Um, and yeah, great cover. Uh, oh, well, I mean, you think that's great, Pete. Take a look at this guy. Do this you have is the special edition? art cover. Oh, my God. Goodness, the, oh, the special edition one is is amazing. It um, is. Tough. I always, I, I'm, it's the most I've ever been tempted to buy an alt art. Um, I have a couple of them, and I think I'm going to be getting this one. I like the regular art because then all my books look the same on the shelf. You know what I mean? Like, it mm -hmm. bothers me that there's one that has like a different binding than the rest of them. But the alt art for this one is so good that maybe it'll tempt me into... I don't think it will, but I like it so I'm much. It 100%. Uh, Incredible. So, uh, <laughs> this is a new book. Um, V-Bunny, I know in chat's already called it out. I'm going to just say it straight here. For those of you who've been following all of the releases for Dungeons & Dragons, this is going to be very similar in its content to Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Uh, very similar name. I really yeah, well, I don't know like why the they name. did that. Like, why, why? Cauldron of Everything? I, I'm with you, V-Bunny. Terrible name. I don't like the name of the book. But Natasha is not known for her cauldrons, particularly, for what I'm aware. Um, yeah, I don't know. But it looks beautiful, so I don't, I don't really worry too much. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that, Jeremy. It's like... Uh, come on! What? It's a the, you can you can do like, a better like name. They could have put any word if they wanted to do cauldron of something. Like they could have put any word, and I would have been into it. Like cauldron of yeah. secrets. Like I, I don't know anything. I would have been fine with, but yeah. yeah cauldron of secrets. Secret, secret, goes on the same yeah. page, lol. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got to follow Jeremy, but I did not see the name in the brief second that it popped ah, up. Vatac versus the world. Thank you so much. For Thank Vatac you so much for, for your follow. I hope you enjoy what we're, we're talking about here today. So, a little bit of backdrop. Uh, I've done quite a bit of research on what's going to be in this book, so that you don't have to. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, named after, of course, Tasha, the, uh, the witch queen, as she's known, um, also known as Igwills. Uh, she is from the Greyhawk setting, and her kind of claim to fame is that she was raised by Baba Yaga. Baba yeah, in, Yaga. in Greyhawk, they just stole, you know, things and made them in the world. They didn't even rename them. Uh, and she was the creator of the Demonomicon, uh, which is going to show up in this book as an artifact, magical item which I'm very excited about. Um, and this is what I, I, uh, I've read a couple of interviews about, you know, with Jeremy Crawford and some other designers from Wizards about what's going to be in the book. And what he had to say is, in the same way that Xanathar gave his opinions throughout Xanathar's Guide to Everything, which you can find that flavor bubbling out in that book, uh, readers will find what this wizard thinks about the character options, artifacts, sidekicks, group patrons, puzzles, etc. as she passes judgment on the book's content. So it's going to be fun. There's going to be that kind of fun um, commentary throughout it. We saw that in Vol's Guide to Monsters, saw that in Sanders' Guide to Everything, uh, and I, I like that. How about, what about you, Pete? I think that makes for more fun reading. 100%. Um... <laughs> Those little snippets are my favorite thing about Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Reading about how Xanathar doesn't like this particular, like, <laughs> likes disintegrating this particular race and stuff. It's just, it's very fun. Um, yeah. So uh, Mine is, I really like Volos, <laughs> what, uh, poisonous frogs in trees? The gods surely have left us. I really like I mean, Mordenkainen's, like, Oh yeah, just I like more than kind of like halflings. Halflings don't belong. They're just why are they so happy? They shouldn't be around yeah. and be able to just be so happy. Like what's more than kind of vibe on the whole section on halflings, uh, which yeah. I loved. So there's going to be a lot of stuff in this book. I'm going to briefly kind of talk about the player content first. I think that's the kind of stuff that you guys are most excited about, most into. I know you dungeon masters out there are really excited for the dungeon master stuff. The book is going to be in four kind of discrete parts. One of those parts is going to be subclasses. There's at least one new subclass for every class in the game, including 
the Artificer. There's going to be that uh, armor subclass heavily revised for the Artificer. And I think I a, the Artificer in its entirety is going to show up in this book. Jeremy, I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you think that if we went late and started and did it the whole day, we could do all the subclasses in one Fantasy Labs? We're going to try. Yeah, right? well, like, there's gonna gonna be, it, right? That's going to be a day, but I'm just wondering if you think that we could actually pull that off. Because I feel like we always go in and think, we'll end up talking about an Unarched Arcana that's two subclasses long, and it'll take us an hour. And I think I yeah. read that there was like 30 subclasses in this book or some outrageous number like that. So There's a lot of... 32, maybe? I, I didn't hear that number. <clears throat> I heard there was at least one for every class. I but read the number, insane. I think that was a 30 um, when I was doing some research on it, too. Big uh, yikes. Holy moly. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's one of the four sections in the book. Another section is going to be variant rules for player characters. Another section is going to be variant rules for dungeon masters. And then, of course, there'll be magic items and all those good shenanigans. Um, but I'm very, very ex 22 subclasses and five revised subclasses. Um, is, uh, uh, after we're saying we're 30 and 22 are new, uh, or 22 and five revised. Yeah, actually, that sounds right. Maybe I was, maybe I was wrong. Uh, at, regardless, it's still a lot. It's a ton of <laughs> new stuff. Oh, so good cup. So. But uh, yeah, it's going to be really, really cool. Um, the big ones that like, I mean, the, sorry, the, right off the bat, there's one subclass thing that, that's going to be in this book that for me got me really riled up. So obviously for the Artificer, we're going to see the Armorer, which we had that Unearthed Arcana that was just kind of not that great. Um, not that well balanced, I'll say. Um, but there's going to be all sorts of new infusions for it, uh, for the Artificer to choose from, and a bunch of cool homunculus art which I love that that's something that they're hyping is homunculus art, just more cool stuff to inspire you. Um, but one of the things I wanted to talk about that I think is pretty controversial, or at least I'm pretty controversed about it, is the Blade Singer Wizard is being published in this book. And it's a complete revision, totally redone version of the Blade Singer Wizard from what's in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. And that is really like, that's wild to me that they're just, that we just remade it differently. That's a, oh. a strange new, I mean, they've done it before, right? Like parts of the Oath of Crown Paladin ended up in the Oath of Redemption and parts of the uh, uh, Purple Dragon Knight ended up in the Cavalier Fighter. But yet the Blade Singer is just getting, is getting reworked and remade in this book. Oh. And that for me is so, oh, I don't know how to feel about that piece. I actually, I do. I, I'm, I don't like that at all. I am okay with it. Um, I don't actually think that it's unhealthy to, to take a step, a second stab at things mm -hmm. with caution, especially in something like the Blade Singer that is so kind of universally kind of. I think it's. I think people generally agree that the Blade Singer wasn't that great of an interpret like it doesn't work that great. no it didn't feel very good to play um the reason being for one thing the book is is five years old uh and maybe more importantly than that um it's if i really liked the old blade singer and you're gonna keep playing i'm gonna keep playing that blade singer and likewise if i didn't like the blade singer and I bought the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. I guess that's the the situation would be you bought the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide because you wanted to play the Blade Singer and you were disappointed with it. And then you found out that much later they just basically did it again. I don't know. I just think it's been enough time that But it's okay. That it's I think five years is is a pretty reasonable uh is so a pretty reasonable. Are they gonna make me a new period. circle of the land druid? Um I would feel maybe a little bit Maybe? more. Di I would feel a little bit differently about them doing that with the player's handbook. I think than yeah. I would about them doing so with the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, which is such like a specialized thing. Uh, and I would reevaluate my opinion. Like I don't even know exactly how I would feel in that situation, and I don't think they would do it. But I would have to just be in that world to really think about how I would feel if they did it with the Land Druid. Yeah, V Benny was asking, "What about the Blades? Uh, what about the Undying Warlock and Battle Rage or Barbarian?" I don't know, maybe they'll be redone in this too. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, there's a whole bunch of new subclasses in here. There's not a lot of information about them. Um, 
I mean, obviously we've seen a whole bunch of Onyx Arcanas coming through in the last year, but I guess we'll uh, we'll see how they all pan out. But it's it's going to be a field day with all these new subclasses. I and, would uh, kind of like to see the Undying Warlock almost the same, but with a slight buff because it's such a well-designed subclass that's just a little weak. Yeah, exactly. Just needs a little bit of oomph in a couple places. Aster was asking, top complaint about the Land Druid. Uh, I mean, it's just a little boring. It just lacks a little bit of... Uh, it lacks one good, one key feature that makes it really fun to play. It can do a lot of things okay, but for me, and it just lacks that one oomph that all of the other Druids have. And where I want it is at second level, exactly. Um, yeah, right? Where every other Druid gets it. Yep. Uh, getting the... Um, getting the spells, the extra spell options, and, like, I think it amounts to when you take it one more spell slot um, from the when you take a short rest specifically. Um, well, you're just a discount wizard with yeah, the druid word. Really, uh, a wizard with spells that are just nowhere near as broad and, and interesting. Um, what might make me like the land druid, I guess, uh, let's not talk about fixing the land Yeah, we don't want to get other... off to, yeah, to yeah. number one complaint, that's it. It just lacks that oomph. Uh, that it needs a second level. Um, but more content coming out in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and maybe it'll include a fix to the Land Druid, frankly. The class feature variants, we all love them. Yes. Uh, the Arthur Connor was released back in, oh, was it like March? I think it was this year. Um, and this is what they had to say about it. No other Unastarkana published for 5th edition has been as popular as the one we created for class feature variants. It was so positive, in fact, that most of these options have made it into the book. Some of that material has been refined in a variety of ways, but it's all going to be recognizable as it was in the Unastarkana. And it and was good. It was really good. And on top of that, apparently there are going to be a whole bunch of other new class feature variants that are going to also be in this book. <laughs> spooky. So. spooky. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid of seeing just the wrong one of those that we didn't know about, but we'll see what uh, comes out. I, I have faith. Typically, their design process for Anastar Kana is they intentionally try and make the Anastar Kana a little too powerful with the idea that if they try and make it too powerful and then the community feedback is it's weak, they've misjudged something mm -hmm. or something about the class, the subclass in the Honor Arcana has been done poorly and it wasn't understood by the community. They, they, yeah, they intentionally make the Honor Arcana too strong. That's like um, kind of their design approach. So I'm, I'm not too concerned. I think they were really good. I think that you're right. I think that you're right. And the first version, I mean, it was. I can't remember if there was even an exception at this point. I mean, there had to have been one or two, but they were pretty universally great. All the things they added. So we'll see. After if they have make the ranger prepared caster, it's going to be a beautiful day. <laughs> it's going to be a beautiful day. Um, so that's a really cool uh, thing for player characters coming out in the book. Uh, they're also going to be t bringing in the magical tattoos. We saw that on Arcana. Um, it was a really cool uh, addition. A yeah. little funky. Um, there were some weird mechanics about like how many tattoos you could have based on like the space on your body, um, which I don't know if they're gonna keep keep that through line. It was an interesting mechanic, but I guess we'll we'll see how it pans out uh, in the end. Oh, most um, most assuredly, um, this is what I was really excited for as mm -hmm. a longtime fan. <laughs> Uh, I think one of few players that's really into puzzles as a, uh, just a small sense of player that's really into puzzles as a gameplay staple. They're making a whole bunch of puzzles for people to just toss into their games. And I'm always looking for new Dungeons and Dragons puzzles. I'm really excited about that. Yeah, there's a whole heap of ready-made, ready-to-drop-into-your-adventure puzzles. Um, they're all written by a designer. Her name is Elisa Teague or Teg, I might be pronouncing it incorrectly, apologize if I am. Um, she's got 17 years of experience in tabletop game design, involved in Betrayal at House on the Hill, Geek Out, and a whole bunch of other games. Uh, I'm really excited they brought in a professional, like that's what she does is design puzzles for like card games and tabletop games. I'm glad they brought a professional puzzle designer in to make puzzles for their game. Puzzles that's are hard. Um, such a smart move. I'm the, very excited to see these. The tag versus the world. I'm terrible at making puzzles. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with you. Like as much as I love puzzles, I've definitely made a lot of puzzles that were duds before, uh, and I'm I've really made excited. More bad puzzles than good puzzles in my. Uh, time. 
I feel like, Jeremy, would you agree that I have a pretty good track record with puzzles? It's pretty solid. Yeah, I, I, anyway, it's it's really hard though, and any time any good puzzle also takes a very long time to like conceive. So I'm really excited to see what a professional puzzle design a pro looks puzzle. like. Yeah. Anyway, I'm this is the thing in the book that caught me more than literally anything else. I'm really excited for the puzzles. Yeah, and that's gonna show up in that kind of the DM only chapter. There's like a quarter of the book is being reserved for stuff for dungeon masters, and in that there'll also be sidekick rules. Uh, there were sidekick rules already in the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak, an adventure that was released as part of the D&D Essentials pack. Um, the kind of, um, I think it was called Essential. Anyway, not the point. Um, now, it might just be the same rules, just reprinted in a more official context here, but the interview kind of implied they would actually be revised and made even leaner uh, with an even simpler implementation and much kind of heavier leaning on low-level stat blocks as, as the core of the uh, the sidekick. So I'm, I'm really excited to see if, uh, yeah, it was a great starter set, uh, Vatek. I've heard, I've heard very good things about it. Uh, I actually haven't had the opportunity to, to play it at all, which is a shame. But yeah, Dragon of Ice Pirate Peak is supposed to be very good. And sidekick rules are even better. So I'm really glad that those are getting a more official inclusion uh, also, getting an official inclusion, I think it was um, uh, um, Jin Hall was saying this, uh, being intrigued by the group patrons. So yeah, in Eberron, Rise of the cool. Last War. Yeah, in, in Eberron, they were included, but they're being added as a more generalized um, option in this new uh, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Um, Pete, you want to talk about a couple of the different, like, options that are going to specifically have support for them in this book. Yeah, uh, ones that were mentioned were the academic institutions, guilds, uh, nobility, um, cr a criminal syndicate, so the, the mob, of course, had to be one, uh, an ancient dragon is a monster patron. Um, so those were, those were some of the examples that were given by wizards as, you know, they're definitely including those. Uh, and apparently they're going to have, like, different, like, missions that they include for like, here's the kind of thing that an ancient dragon would ask players to do. Yeah. Uh, and likewise, like, I, I don't know if it's like a reward based, like they have things that they will give you, but you get also like perks, mechanical perks for being affiliated with and for doing stuff for your, uh, your guild or whatever it is that you have. So. Yeah, it's very, very cool. I mean, it, it was kind of unclear in the, in the interview exactly what that would entail, but it seemed like, all right, let's say, you have a no, nobility as your patron, right? You might get advantage on certain uh, things um, related to like interacting with nobles. Same could be with like, you know, criminal syndicates that interact with the underbelly. Almost like a, like almost like a background feature. Yeah, exactly, like a group background feature. Uh, you, if you read the Eberron Rising Blast War book, you're probably familiar with this concept, um, but this is intended to be way broader and more general use cases. Whereas Eberron was like specific newspapers and things in Sharn. Um, this is meant to be a lot broader use case. So you could even use them in your own home per se, which I really appreciate. Um, but yeah, very cool. I think it's going to be a blast, the group rules. There's also yeah, some funky, funky new mechanics coming out for supernatural environments and guidelines to run games in them. So this is kind of like, you know, in the Dungeon Master's Guide, there's a little bit of stuff in there about, like, the Astral Sea and Planar Wind, I think it's called. Yeah. And some funky stuff like that. Well, this is going to have more, like, usable guidelines and rules for playing in crazy supernatural environments. Yeah. Um, haunted some of the Forest. examples they gave. Yeah, Haunted Forest was a great example. I don't know what the heck it's going to entail, but that's so cool. The I idea, here, here are some mechanics to play in, like, a ghost infested, you know, region. And I think that that's like, this is obviously there to like really tie it back to Tasha. I feel like yeah. this is like Tasha's thing that they had to do something with book that more directly related to, to her. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, they, they were also saying they were going to include like enchanted springs or um, magical forests as, yeah, as, all of as these supernatural cool. environments, which, I mean, those will be just absolute gems for anyone who wants to run anything with the Feywild for any amount of time. Oh, for sure, because everything there is that. <laughs> yeah, everything. 
Uh, and along those lines, they're also going to be including a whole bunch of new natural hazards. Oh, that's cool. They haven't mentioned if there are going to be mechanics, like if it's going to be a revision of the mechanics in the Dungeon Master's Guide, or just more traps, like quicksand uh, and, um, you know, the, the various funguses and molds in the Dungeon Master's Guide, which I really love using in my game. I've had a blast incorporating those, especially into my lower level adventures. I so didn't I've read really... about that. Yeah, they're cool. pretty cool. Um, they're basically just little traps and puzzles that just make sense with nature, uh, with the environment. So it's going to be going to be rad. Um, Hells yeah. There are two other major things they're going to be including in here in the Dungeon Master's kind of corner that I think are super, super, super long in coming. Because I don't know about you, Pete, but this happens in almost every campaign that I try to run. A player at some point tries to parlay with an enemy. They, it's a tense moment, you're in the middle of combat, and a player tries to make peace, tries to RP, like, par, you know, you know. Uh, just like, all right, we're both really beat up. Let's just both take it easy for a second and talk about this, you know, that kind yeah. of situation. And uh, I'm excited because they're actually going to be including mechanics and rules for doing that. Um, um, I have kind of my own in my head for how I deal with that based on a monster's challenge rating and its uh, ability scores. But and it's like it's I'm excited goals, to see what they like who the monster is. Yeah, I mean um, a great example actually is in in D and D time just the other day with the the owl bear they were battling uh, in in my adventure. They yeah. are they made peace with the owl bear, and I'm really excited to see what the mechanics are for uh, are going to actually be for it. Likewise. Uh, that'll be uh, that'll be interesting to see. Certainly, um, like it it almost feels like too late. Do you know what I mean? Like we've gone this long without it that every yeah. game d does it. So it kind of feels a little underwhelming to me. But uh, I am well, I am looking still forward. Tons to it. of new players joining in D and D though, right? Like, always true. And I am yeah. looking forward to seeing what it is. So. Mm. Uh, Vatex says, interesting, I've never thought about actual mechanics uh, to something like that. Probably seems very RP-based. Yeah, I think you can run it either way. Um, when you get a party that learns they can avoid encounters with RP, there are some times where they, they get almost too into doing that, where, like, and it's, it's because it makes sense, and it's, it's fun and all, but then they tend to avoid a lot of combats, and that's that's fine sometimes but sometimes there needs to be the, the tension of being attacked by the monster so i'm, I'm interested to see what uh, mechanics are going to actually have in there because that's wild to me yeah it's um, definitely uh definitely a kind of a stranger choice um but um Jeremy, this uh i also didn't read about but i see you have it written here which is guidance for running a session zero yeah, uh, they're also going to be including guidance for Session Zero. They have said nothing more about that besides that they've actually officially recognized the value of Session Zeros in running a long-term campaign. Which Everyone now does it. You did it. Congrats. Um, um, we, as, we as the D&D &D community have changed D&D, &D, uh, which, is, which is cool. Um, what's, what's really interesting, though, I'm wondering how different their guidance is going to be from because if their guidance is bad right like how good is it going to be because if it's bad it actually could actively hurt you know what i mean yeah certainly um i mean i'm sure it'll be fine i, 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 can, I can't imagine like i think everyone has a i suspect that the guidance on running a session zero will be two pages of like talk about what kind of stuff you're going to do in your game build characters together mm -hmm make sure you're all on the same page before you start like i can't imagine it being like actively detrimental advice well but like stuff like you know talking about setting setting limits in terms of things that you do and don't want to see in your game right like how to address issues if they do come up that's the kind of stuff that sh kind of should be talked about in a lot of session zeros that um certainly you know I, I think they could miss if they're not uh, yeah I, I don't know i actually think that wizards won't do that uh, uh, I, that's I know what I'm worried about. Maybe. Like, which I don't think is actively detrimental. It would just be good if they did, you know? Yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll see it's what Wizards thinks. Yeah, I mean, it's an opportunity for them to really, really show they're, they're invested in making a... And making community healthy. A healthy, a healthy environment yeah. in this game. 
because this game has a really terrible track record. Really. Uh, in in a lot of in a lot of places certainly, but well yeah we'll yeah. see. I, I'm am very interested to read what they say about session zero. Yeah, uh, there's a whole bunch of other new stuff coming. Uh, magic items, magic on items. Wazoo. We got especially artifact level stuff. There's a lot of um, new artifacts being Demon added. Demonomicon is, is a fun one to see. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what that's going to entail. I'm very excited. Uh, if you've played a lot of older editions, you're going to recognize a lot of the artifacts coming back to the game because a huge number of them are just coming back from old games. Uh, the Mighty Servant of Luke O. I don't know what that is. I wasn't <laughs> here. But it um, sounds cool. The Crook of Rao. Probably that's really the, cool. That's familiar. <laughs> that name is familiar as all that hell. Sounds today. familiar. It sounds kind of like. Anyway. Um, and then there are a couple new artifact level things coming to the game. Uh, one of them is a Taroka deck, an artifact version of the Taroka deck. This deck will be used to capture beings of evil, or has been used to capture beings of evil. The risk associated with using its powers is that the spirits trapped inside might escape, and then you might have to go and recapture them. Uh, um, it's a great uh, it's a great example of how the best artifacts can also be powerful plot devices they, generating adventure in addition to being a reward. They put Yu-Gi-Oh in the game. Or actually okay. it's more like card captor Sakura to be fair. Uh for any of you <laughs> it's a deeper anime cut, but really they put Yu-Gi-Oh in the game. Yeah, it's actually interesting back when Merles was uh uh actually in the forefront wizards, they um he was running a a uh a short form adventure with that exact concept. So I think they just took the, the thing he had designed for that adventure and made it into a, an actual item, which it, I love that. I love the idea of not just artifacts, and I hope more of them have that, but artifacts that themselves bring in more plots and stories Absolutely. and some guidance for how to do that. Um, uh, and of course, there'll so... be other magical items. It didn't sound like there'd be any common magic items, though. Uh, mostly, you know, uncommon, rare, and higher and stuff. That's, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. That, that is the, maybe the most important thing. <laughs> the, the coolest thing that they're adding. Uh, um, except for puzzles. It's pretty rad. The second best I, thing after I puzzles. puzzles. Uh, which um, is the uh, the character origins thing, Jeremy. Yeah, so this is the, the one last thing to talk about uh, we have for this, because, I mean, there's so much that's going to be in the book. We're not going to go over every little thing here. Um, this one has gotten a lot of, of stir on the internet. Um, it's the character origins. Uh, these are going to include all sorts of new rules, uh, optional rules, of course, uh, for adjusting how ability scores work uh, from the race options of the book, uh, and also how some uh, racial features can be adjusted or changed depending on your character's origin. Um, which origin is kind of like a, an almost even deeper level than background, right? Background is like, what was your job? Origin was, is going to be like, how did you grow up? What kind of society did you grow up in? Um, it's uh, build bear races. I love it. Yeah, I completely agree, V-Bunny. I mean, the whole point of this is it's going to provide a bunch of guidelines for player characters or for players on how they can dig into the things that make their character exceptional because as an adventurer in D&D you're exceptional you're not the run of the mill you know orc or elf or human or dwarf or any anything you're 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 going to be a level 20 adventurer someday and fight gods right you're not just a normal normal character um and uh yeah they they had this to kind of say about the context of the way the player's handbook was designed and that is the race options as written in the player's handbook are a western high fantasy archetype if you want your character's backstory to diverge from that archetype in a significant way there are going to be some very simple rules on how to make the changes i love that yeah because that's it opens the door for other uh settings like eberron isn't your western high fantasy it's just not. It's Planescape, no. not your Western high fantasy. Most assuredly. So this opens the door for those other settings to be played. Uh, you know, if you're only interested in playing your old kind of Tolkien-esque Western high fantasy, you probably don't care about these. They probably don't matter too much to you. Or they might still, you might still be interested in them. But uh, yeah, um, I'm really excited for these. I, I hated that they didn't do this off the bat because they did it in fourth edition, Pete, they did this. Late really? in, the, in the, the system, they added these mechanics in to have alternate ability scores on races. 
And um, I don't know why the fuck they got rid of it in 5e. Uh, yeah, like, it's just like, like... It was a huge step back. I mean, really, it's just... I want to play a wizard orc is <laughs> really what this is almost like the subtext of this is just, I want to, I want to yeah. play a wizard orc and it sucks that the game doesn't let you do that naturally. So they're kind of, it, it's, this feels mm -hmm. very much like a correction of, Hey, sorry, we forgot to include this almost like, which definitely should have always been in the game. V money was asking, as long as they don't make it too overpowered, uh, I openly accept it. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that, V money because I think this is actually really awesome to include. For parties that really love that optimization yeah, that aspect full of the game, hot, right there, you got it. Like, you can this do it. Um, it's an opening the door for them. I mean, yeah, this is for, some 3.5 stuff. I don't know anything yeah. about 3.5. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> For people who really like the role-playing aspect of the game, this opens a million. You can make any character now work, and it like will function the way you want it to, and it will be successful. You can be a really successful dwarf thief. Like you can make your you know master thief dwarf character work, and that's I think a really cool thing in the game now. You I... know, I, I really don't see anywhere any drawback. To this i have been basically doing this my whole career in DD already i've come to the table and think ah, i want to play this race but it doesn't quite like line up the way that i want to because i like having i like having good stats uh and mm -hmm. my stats going where i want so i'll just be like hey my dwarf's really smart can i take a plus one to int instead of wisdom or whatever uh and yeah. basically every dungeon master i've ever played with has been like yeah just change it uh and i like that they're putting whatever the game i just yeah uh well it's also an optional rule which is a, a you know it's not like replacing the rules that already exist in all of the races everywhere it's gonna be a really really simple optional rule for like hey if, if you've got a thing that you want to do that the game doesn't let you do here's a way to do it so i just um, i can't see how this could be a detrimental thing to the uh, it's just going to make things be a little bit more, I don't know, open and inclusive for those who, like, are put off by the, oh, all orcs are dumb thing, which is, you know, a reasonable thing to be put off by. Agreed. Um, with Tag versus the World, I think because they included this new option to make characters even more customizable, it's probably why they included the Session Zero portion. Those two yeah. sections probably fit well together for both uh, player and DM. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, that's a great point. Uh, I just, I agree with you. It's a good point. <laughs> well, and it's the kind of thing where, like, as a dungeon master, it's up, up to you to take these rules and use them as what makes sense in your world, right? If you're playing in a world where orcs are just monsters, they aren't a race, they aren't a playable race, you can't play as them, there are no civilized orcs, they're all just monstrous thralls of, a you know, grumsh. an evil god, like Grumsh, right? You can, do, like, you can just do that. <laughs> that's, the, yeah. that's the Forgotten Realm setting there. These are, uh, this doesn't matter for you, right? You can just ignore that aspect of the rules. You know, these rules aren't going to change that a player character might say, hey, I want to be an orc. And you say, well, that's not how my setting works. So no, you know, this, these rules don't, don't change that. <laughs> I have difficulty accepting change stat. Well, then don't use them, Frosty. You don't have yeah, to. Yeah, that's also the, the key thing is like, I mean, you just, cannot allow them in the your thing games that's but blown me away is just the the veracity with which people have been like fighting this just conceptually it's like yeah, guys, I just, don't get just it. chill this is just I don't about, get it yeah like letting people have fun optional like, your rules fun are, is not wrong Neither optional rules are optional for a reason we, we yeah. don't we don't use feats in D, &D time like yeah feats every yeah. single person would think that feats are just like canon in the game like you can actually be optional with any rule set you could do that as a dm yeah uh, but anyway that's that's pretty much everything for tasha's cauldron of everything um yeah. do you have anything else i mean i'm really excited about this book uh, i'm really excited about puzzles jeremy hey jeremy can we do a special stream where you run a dungeon for me single player and i try and solve all of the puzzles <laughs> we'll ruin all the puzzles i won't be able to use the puzzles for you in the future pete but jeremy i'm gonna read them otherwise and i would love to experience them 
but otherwise I won't be because I have to read the puzzles. This is this is aside the point. Maybe I'll convince Jeremy to do me this great boon as a bonus stream, but that probably won't See, happen. I'm only ever going to read like one or two of the puzzles until I need to use them for the, in my games. I'm going to. I'm not going to read them all because I want to be surprised by them. Well, I want to, but Jeremy, I know that I'll never have someone run those puzzles for me, and that I'm going to use those puzzles in other games. What so, if I run the puzzles for you? That's what I'm saying. In a regular Just, game run all the puzzles well i want to use them too though this is aside anyway. the point this is aside the point uh, th we're going to take a break and then we're going to come back with a segment which i've entitled miniature adventures um <laughs> it's not that great of a name do you have anything else about tasha's i'm sorry that i no tasha's this. is awesome we'll be back in five minutes folks stay we'll tuned we'll get back we're gonna brainstorm some dungeon stuff <laughs> 